So what is reliability? Well, reliability is basically the concept that a product or system will perform its intended function for a certain period of time under certain conditions of usage. In other words, if you have a car and you drive it um, at normal speed in in normal conditions for a certain period of time everything should work fine if you have a car and you drive it it's not it's not an off-road vehicle and you drive it through fields in mucky conditions and that's what you do with it and then it breaks down well that's not the fault of that car manufacturer because that particular car was not designed to be driven through a uh, rough uh, terrain so again, the, it's an important definition to know. So what is reliability? What is that, that a product or service will perform its intended function for a certain period of time under certain conditions of usage? So therefore, based on, on that definition, a product is reliable if it does not wear out before the end of the expected life cycle when the product is used as intended. So for that car, if it was not driven through the fields, it would, it would have an expected life cycle. If it was driven through rough terrain, it would break down sooner than predicted. A product that wears out before the anticipated time is considered an early failure. So an early failure is a concept in the whole area of reliability engineering, an early failure. So what is an early failure? Well, in the case of the car that was driven um, on normal roads at normal speeds um, and and it ha it would um, have a normal lifespan that would be fine but if that car that was used under those conditions broke down a month after it was purchased well that's an early failure for that particular product so in order to determine if the product is reliable it is necessary to make observations about the failure rate and what that means, basically, you're doing experiments. So that car would have been tested under different conditions to make observations about its failure rate. And these observations, these tests, form a pattern, and they call it the pattern of failure. And based on the pattern of failure, a prediction can be made about the reliability of the product using probability theories. So reliability engineering is this is this topic and probability theories are used in reliability engineering to predict the chances of failure of a product and determining the patterns of failure is important for improving reliability of your product by using a reliability program in the organization so in your organizations if you design and develop products you have prototypes and they will be tested by engineers and they will um, make observations around when the product might fail and they will make predictions of when that potentially would happen and where does this all feed back into well that's how uh, companies come up with their warranties for a product that was state within the warranty what would be the predicted lifespan of a product and how did they come up with that, uh, that idea by doing prototype testing uh, doing experiments around failure rates so because reliability is a probability, there is always some chance of failure, failure even if a product or system is used as intended. So there, again, because we're talking about probability, there is always a case or a chance of potential failure. If you look at something where you do your observations and your testing, you uh, would assume that you would have a graph like this. So you have your car, you do your tests, and over time, the product would fail over time. Well, that is called a traditional pat pattern of failure. So that's what the layman would assume that if for any new product that you buy or purchase, it would work fine until the end and then it would start to fail. That, uh, that uh, prediction is called 
uh, pattern, traditional pat pattern of favor, failure when you graph it. Like, so pattern of failure is the pattern established by the failure rate of a part, product or system. And the traditional understanding of the pattern of failure involves the assumption that items operate as intended onto the wear out. So that is what the lay person assumes. However, when you do experiments, you find something else. And failure can happen at different times in the life cycle of a product. And when you um, do these experiments on uh, failure, potential of failure, you will notice that a, a certain type of graph can be uh, constructed from the data of these observations of failure. And this type of graph is called the bat tub curve. And we're going to have a look at it here. So if you were to test a product or the car, for example, and you're monitoring the failure rate over time and you plot the data, you will see that it forms a uh, graph like this. And because it is in the shape of a bat tub, it is known as the bat tub curve. So how do we interpret this graph? Okay, so I am test. I'm an engineer, and I work in R and D, and I have a, a car as the product that I'm testing. So I want to test it for failure. So I start my testing, and what I'll notice that I will have some of my products will fail earlier than expected, and this is called infant mortality mortality or early life fails, and this occurs uh, perhaps when there is an issue in the manufacture of the car. So maybe there was a defective co a component put into the car or maybe um, an error happened in the manufacture of the car. Maybe a machine went down or something like that. So something unpredictable happened. And then when that car was uh, put into use, there was an infant mortality uh, failure or early life failure. And uh, the next uh, part of the bathtub curve is the low, the useful life of the product. So this is the car is in use and it, it and it goes out through its normal life, no issue. It's the useful life, and here, um, everything going fine. There's very low failure rate for the product then, and the last part of the car, uh, reliability uh, observations. If you were to plot them, you would have the wear out at the end of life part of the curve. And that's the normal, what you would expect towards the end of the life of a car. Um, it would it would uh, be break down more, etc. And you would get to end of life. So that in reliability, reliability engineering, this is known as the bat tub curve. So you have infant mortality, useful life and wear out. They're the three parts of the curve. 